Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tech Gamers World. In this video, I'm going to provide you with a hands-on tutorial and demonstration on how to use your Sony PlayStation Portal outside of your home network. This video will show you the basic configuration of the PS Portal and the Sony PlayStation 5 and some basic troubleshooting tips that you can do. So let's get it started. So what is the PlayStation Portal? The PlayStation Portal is essentially a remote screen viewer and controller for the PlayStation 5. It works in conjunction with the PlayStation 5 using Sony's proprietary remote play technology. This device is basically just another screen for the PlayStation Portal. What you see on the screen is what you see on the PlayStation. And I'll show you that here shortly. So I love this device. It is really cool and it works really well. So configuring it, there are a couple things that you can do to make it work with your home network and outside of your network. So the PlayStation Portal, like I just said, works internally in your home network, that's internal, and external when you're out in the world. Now there are three things that you need to have remote play capabilities with a PlayStation Portal. One, of course, you need a PlayStation Portal. Two, you need a Sony PlayStation 5. This, only, this device only works with a Sony PlayStation 5, so keep that in mind. Third, you need internet. Now, inside of your house, you need either wired or wireless ethernet. Internet, same thing. Outside of your house, you need to be connected to wireless internet because that's all that the PlayStation Portal supports. So I'll talk about why I said wired and wireless in a second. You also need, like I said, wired internet outside of your house. That can be provided via third-party internet, such as a hotspot at a cafe, free internet, uh, a friend's house, wherever you get your internet from. In my case, I have a 5G mobile hotspot that we'll be using here, and I'll show you, I'll test it with this. So, how do you configure your Sony PlayStation 5 for remote play? So I'm actually gonna go ahead now and pull up a PlayStation 5 screen to show you what exactly that remote play settings and internet settings should be. So let's do that now. Okay, so here we are with the PlayStation Portal main screen. This is the home screen. So what you wanna do to make sure that remote play is enabled and properly configured is to check a couple of things. Let's start with the very basics. So obviously you need a Sony PlayStation 5 to work with the PS Portal. It has to be internet connected, so let's talk a little bit about that. By internet connected, I mean wired or wireless. The PlayStation Portal supports two methods of connecting to the internet, wired it has an RJ45 port on the back. It, the RJ45 port looks like an oversized phone jack. That supports a CAT5 or CAT6 Ethernet cable that is capable of supporting up to one gig connection. Wireless, the PlayStation 5 has a built-in on the motherboard wireless adapter that supports the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz wireless channels. If you're going to connect the PlayStation 5 to a wireless network, I recommend you use the 5 gigahertz wireless only. 2.4 is typically too slow and can be laggy. Now, so can the 5 gigahertz, but we'll talk a little bit about that here. So let's go up to settings here and let's verify network connectivity. So you can see that my PS5 is connected to my wireless network. It is connected via on a five gigahertz SSID. Now, my particular wireless, I have a mesh wireless system. That means I have blanket wireless coverage throughout my entire house. First floor, second floor, third floor, all have access points on them that create a unified mesh network. I connect to any one access point, I will seamlessly roam between the rest. This particular PlayStation is downstairs in my gaming room, 
and it is connected to the downstairs access point. So what I recommend you do is if you have really good, strong, verified, verifiably strong wireless coverage, then feel free to use the PlayStation 5 on the wireless. It works fine with the PlayStation Portal. With that said, if your wireless is weak or you have a ISP provided wireless modem that is given through your vendor, like Fios gives a G31 modem that has 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wireless capabilities in it, they're okay, but they're not meant for a whole house. So if your wireless access point is a floor up and two rooms over, you may have weak wireless to your PlayStation. It may be good enough for the PlayStation to connect to and download games, but streaming from the PlayStation to the PS Portal is a whole nother thing. So I recommend that your wireless be very strong and have good blanket coverage. If you doesn't or you're not sure how to configure your wireless for that, then I recommend hardwiring your PlayStation. That involves running a cable to your PlayStation, which for me is behind me back there, directly to your modem and disabling the wireless on your PlayStation. Now, that means you'll have a line speed connection and nearly lag free to the modem. You can never have true lag free because every connection introduces a bit of lag, but you get the point. So let's go ahead here and view connection status. So it's connected to the internet through Wi-Fi. Internet status is connected. It shows all my SSIDs, security method, IP settings. Now, very important, your IP address. Set your IP address for a manual static IP on your Sony PlayStation. Now, I'll explain to you why that is shortly, and I'll show you too. Proxy server, we don't use. MTU settings are automatic. NAT type, super important. NAT type type 2. If it's anything less than type 2 or different, you're going to have connectivity problems. That could be because your PlayStation is behind a firewall. If you have a corporate firewall in your house, such as a sonic wall, a watch card, any of those kind of things, that can result in a different NAT type. You want either open or type 2. It's pretty much impossible to get open unless you plug the uh, PS5 straight into like the internet modem through. But if I'm on Wi-Fi, it's going to be natted and type 2. So don't worry about that. Um, let me move my little picture out of the way here so you can see my uh, upload and download speeds here. So let's go ahead and test connection speed. So it's going to send 512 megs of data will be sent and received. And we'll see what our download and upload speeds are. So download is 419.5 megs per second. So I have one gig fiber at my house, but being on Wi-Fi, you lose a, a percentage. The upload should be pretty good here. Now let's see what the upload comes in at. Again, you don't need the upload to be crazy, but it's got to be good enough to stream to the PlayStation portal on. So we're just waiting here for it to check and it takes a little longer. Upload is a little on the low side. Now that could be because it's the PlayStation's connecting to their servers and whatnot. I have a feeling it'll be a lot faster than that. So we're not going to worry about that. I've run it a bunch of times and it always comes in on the lower side with the PlayStation portal, uh, PlayStation 5, sorry. So as you can see, everything's set here. So once you've verified that your PlayStation 5 has solid internet connectivity, you want to view your PlayStation network status and verify all services are working, which they are. And then what we want to do is go down to system and go to remote play. And I'll move myself here again. I move myself back and forth here a bunch of times. So there we go. So remote play has to be enabled. Remote play is what lets you do exactly what it says. You're going to remote play slash remote control the PlayStation 5 
from a device. Now, this could be from a phone, could be from the PlayStation Portal. You can only use one at a time. So if you connect to one, it'll disconnect the other. So it's pretty straightforward there. Power saving, super important. Rest mode, also called power saving. The PlayStation cannot shut off. If the PlayStation shuts off, you won't be able to connect to it remotely. Kind of goes with that saying. So what you want to do is make sure that the following features are available in rest mode. Supply power to the USB ports. Always, three hours are off. Now this is up to you. What that's doing is it's giving power to the USB-A ports, which are the vertical rectangles, or the USB-C ports, which are the smaller ones. So you can charge your PlayStation Portal, your controller, through those USB ports. I personally just leave them on all the time. So you're always there where you can just plug in, charge. Stay connected to the internet. This must be on. If this is off, you won't be able to connect to the internet when the PlayStation is in rest mode. And then enable turning on PS5 from the network. So while in rest mode, you can turn on your PS5 remotely using the PlayStation app or remote play. So again, this. Okay, so those things are set. They're basically the things that you need to have enabled on your PlayStation to ensure remote play works. So let's go ahead now and show you something that is optional but recommended on your ISP modem or firewall to enable remote play from the outside. So I'll show you that now. I'm going to go ahead here and switch screens. Okay, so what I've got here is I am sharing a screen with you from a device connected to my home network. I am logged in to my ISP's modem. Now, modern modems provide a very basic firewall aspect. They will do what's called IDS IPS, Intrusion Detection Services, Intrusion Prevention Services. Now, don't confuse a ISP provided modem with a true firewall. They're totally different, but they provide some of the basic security functions. So if you want to connect your device from the outside internet to the inside home network, you need to sometimes do what's called port forwarding. Now port forwarding is when a somebody, so let's say, yells at your modem from the outside, sends a message to it and says, hey, here I am, send me to the PlayStation. Well, some devices in between your PlayStation and the internet won't know how to get your PlayStation portal to your PlayStation because the modem sits in the way. So there is a technology that exists called NAT, which is Network Address Translation, or as it's also referred to, port forwarding. So port forwarding essentially opens a tunnel between a remote computers and a device port on your home network LAN to support gaming, IoT, home security devices, and more. If you have an ISP modem at home, you don't necessarily need to do this to have remote play work. I still recommend just putting them in because you're not making any security holes by doing this other than to these ports, but that's okay. You, you may find that the remote play works perfectly fine. It all depends on your internet provider's modem. Now, if you have an enterprise grade firewall on your home network, which some people do, I personally set them up for people, you absolutely need to do port forwarding. Otherwise, you'll find that you can never connect to your PlayStation 5 via remote play from outside because that firewall is doing exactly what it's designed to do. It's to prevent external intrusion. So I'm not gonna go through in detail how to configure port forwarding on a device because there are so many range of devices out there that everyone's different. But basically you wanna look for network address translation or port forwarding. That's basically what you wanna look for. So here are the ports that I've set up. So PS5, you can see I set the name, the port, and the protocol. So PS5 1935 is the port, so the device name the 1935 is the port, TCP is the protocol. And then here is the original port, 
the protocol, the forward to address, the forward to port, and always. So you're basically going to work this down, and I'll put these uh, port forwarding things in the description for the video if you want them. So again, just they're published on Sony's website, but I'll put them in the description. You can just view them there. So you have to set up all these. So TCP, UDP, both, both. So the port number, both TCP, UDP, and then whichever ones are just TCP, UDP. So 1935 TCP, 3075 UDP, 3478 is both TCP, UDP, 3479 is both TCP, UDP, 3480 is TCP, 8572 is UDP. Now, these are the recommended ports that be set up as per Sony's website and some other uh, sites and conversations I found on forums. But these seem to be the accepted ports to use. Now, again, this is specific to my home network. This may not be even needed for you. If you don't need them, one general rule of thumb is least amount of access, privileged access possible. So if you don't need to input these ports, by all means, don't do it. If the remote play works fine, then leave it as is. I found that for me, it didn't. So I had to input these, and then it got immediately better. So again, it all depends on your home network setup. So with that said, let's go ahead now and switch back to the PlayStation which we'll do right now. Okay, so we are ready to test out the PlayStation Portal. So here is the PlayStation Portal. As you can see, my Elgato video capture card is recording no input. The TV behind me is on the TV home screen waiting for input. The PS5 back there is sitting in rest mode. I'm gonna go ahead here and connect my PlayStation Portal to my mobile hotspot and we'll see how this works. So the first thing you want to do is take your PlayStation Portal and look up on the top of it. There is a power on button. Here is the screen powered on. First thing you want to do is swipe down from the top right, bring up this menu, go to settings and network. Now, in my case, I've already connected to my mobile hotspot a bunch of times, but if you haven't, you would go to set up internet connection and connect to your network of choice, whether it's a mobile hotspot, a business, someone's house, whichever. So because we're connected here, we're going to verify that we have a solid connection. To do that, you want to go to NAT type. Now you need at least NAT type 2 for it to work with remote play. So as you can see, we have a NAT type 2. If you don't get that, you need to verify your mobile hotspot settings. Okay, so let's back out here and let's give this the try. So we want to go ahead in here and press the PS button and we're going to verify that it connects to my PlayStation 5. We just have to wait. I can hear my PlayStation coming online and I know that because there's a CD in it of uh, one of the games. We can see it is now on the TV and on my video capture card. And now we just have to wait a minute for the PlayStation Portal to connect. Now it will take a little bit longer when you're outside of the network because you can connect it to a external network, mobile hotspot, etc. So just bear with it for a minute here. And it will connect shortly. Just have to be patient with it. And there we go. We are ready to play. So, go ahead here and we sign in. We now see a mirror image of what's on the screen. So you can see from two different locations the input. So I'm going to go ahead here and move the input. You can see it translating on my TV behind me, on the video capture card, and on the PS portal here. So we're going to go ahead and try out a game. Let's try Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, one of my favorite games. So you'll notice that the video input drops for a second. The video capture card, the resolution changes with this game. 
so it changes the video capture card has to compensate. So let's go ahead here and we'll just select our friendly neighborhood and continue. This is a great spot for demonstrative purposes. So here we are. Let's walk down the street here. You can see there is zero latency compared to any of the other screens. Do some web swing in here. As you can see, we are having a rock solid connection here to climb up this building. So if you were experiencing latency or jitter, now is when you would see them. The PlayStation portal would be super slow and almost probably disconnect if it gets really bad. So as you can see here, we are having a whole lot of fun and we are set up for some amazing PlayStation Portal remote play. I absolutely love this device. I think it is awesome. It is so easy to configure and makes PlayStation Portal remote play that much more awesome. See here, do some web swinging down the street. If anyone has any questions or comments about this video, as always, please drop a comment down below. I will do my best to get your question answered. If anyone needs any help, I would be glad to help you properly configure your Sony PlayStation 5 or your Play P bleh, excuse me, PlayStation Portal for some amazing immersive remote play. Hope everybody enjoyed this video. Please click that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to have new and exciting content coming soon. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I will see you around. Keep on gaming.